gonna be so cool. I've never rode in any car like this before in my life. Welcome back to another Millionaire Mansion home tour. This time, we're actually not touring the inside of the house. We're gonna be focusing on all these wicked cars that Manny has. We met him for the first time on TikTok. Just a couple months ago, I came and knocked on his door. He told us that he does import export. We're gonna learn ups and downs of how he got where he is today, see these awesome cars, learn his backstory, and just have some fun. Let's go knock. What's going on, bro? Welcome back, man. What's going on? <laughs> Not much, man. I can't wait to check out these cars. Let's do it. Let's go check them out. us in TikTok what you do for a living but did you study the, uh, that I did not not I mean obviously for import export gotcha but, uh, yeah, it was, uh, so where did you study Guelph, Guelph University Guelph University okay and it was um, just kind of for business I guess business finance so right on helps. yeah definitely I always say this it's cool to be disciplined and that's that's what's more important than um, getting the education and going out and doing what you're doing yeah right on so you got into uh, import export what were you doing before that so here's the thing funny um, I started off my first job was uh, working in retail got you worked at the mall what store did you work at Zara <laughs> you look like a Zara kind of guy <laughs> I can see you wearing the rocket yeah. Zara I think the car we were gonna first talk about is the Mercilago so yeah, this is this is a. I love the color. I gotta say. Yeah, I had to match that. It's like classic. Board. It's like a classic Lamborghini. It's color, an huh? iconic. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. classic. You can never go wrong with a yellow. I've seen the seats. Like, are those seats comfortable? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> they don't look comfortable. Not they at, at like all. This car is you. probably the most unpractical car to, 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 to drive. Oh uh, really? Yeah, it's a car that you just look how at. How often do you drive this one? Since I've had it, probably once. It's a, really? Taking it at once. And how many kilometers are on it? Right now, it's sitting at about 7,500. I don't know if you can tell, you kind of almost see the fans inside. So when, so when they're lit up, it looks like just three rows right here. Three stars. They rotate. They rotate, yeah. My buddy and I were like, you know, let's do something of our own. Let's like figure out a gig where we can just make cash. Yeah. Where we don't have to, we don't have a boss. We don't have yeah. to clock in and out. And I started doing deliveries. Really? Yeah. That's how I started. I started deliveries. deliveries. Yeah. Product deliveries. Like, so you just, would deliver them yourself? Yeah. I was in high school. Wow. Man. I did that right um, through university. No way. Yeah. I just went up and instead of having a mini man, I got a Cuba. Nice. They're just slowly ranking. It's ranked up. And yeah. they got smaller and smaller. Yeah. Now they barely come off the ground. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what were some of the challenges that you faced, I guess, growing that business? Challenges? Well, one age. Age. You wouldn't trust me. Really? You no, know, I was a skinny, scrawny kid. You know, how are you gonna move stuff? Mm -hmm. Can you even lift stuff up? You know, <laughs> really? Hundred. Did anybody was... specifically ever ask you that? Oh yeah, yeah. I'd pull up to the, you know, to the customer's house and say, yeah, okay, like, what am I moving? They'll show me a couch or, or a fridge. To yeah. Them. Like, okay, I can do it. So yeah, do you think, uh, like, age? So people didn't take you seriously? No, I think the age was a big factor. That you know, they thought I was just didn't you know, take yeah. the money and not really do the job. Mm, I see. Right. Like it obviously started to grow really fast. What, at what point did you realize that this was something really big? Um, when I started making five hundred dollars a day from tips. Five hundred dollars in just tips. Remember, I was on like I'm like eighteen. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah. 500 bucks in a day from just tips, you know. So that's why I was like, there's something more into this. Yeah, definitely. I love no. this glass, like, vision to the engine. Exactly. You can see right in. That's what I love about the Ferraris. They'll expose everything. They'll, mm -hmm. they'll, they'll put it out there. And you want to see that motor. Or yeah. You want to hide the motor, right? That's what I said. Easy. Get in. And that's it. So you kind of went from moving things from A to B to like moving moving things from A to B, but way bigger distances. Exactly. Wow. wow. Bringing in, you know, containers. Boxes. Got you. Like shipping containers. Exactly. And then started, obviously, I, I was trying to build my network, meeting all these people, and that's what I did. And then once so I is was, there a lot of traveling involved in that? A lot. Oh. That question leads me into, how did COVID-19 impact your business and what you do? It impacted everyone, obviously, right? And then last year, I looked at it and I said, okay, how, what can we do differently? And sat down with my team and we made changes. Went online with a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Started selling a lot of products online and stuff and it helped a lot. Gotcha. But this is when it comes to stuff like this, you have to find other ways, find other means. And there's always another way, there's always another means. When people say there's this is the only option, no, there's always other options available mm -hmm. out there. Let's order something. Okay. What are you getting? Um, I'll just have something cold, but that guava thing looks bomb. All right, let's Passion. do it. I don't think they'll be able to hear me. I'm gonna have to shut this car off. We'll have a guava passion fruit. Uh, let's do a grande. Yeah, medium, whatever. Uh, grande. Let's do two of those. Now the SLS. If every, people know SLS, they're iconic cars as well. Mm -hmm. It almost there's reminds me like James Bond. There's the second generation of the uh, Gullwing doors, right? It's That's like the wicked. James Bond look. And yeah. the Fenty. I had to. I That's had. To. It's it's. You know what? I'm never the one for brands, but yeah. I had to do the Fenty. It, it really matches. It matches. The, so the color of the car. It's that Fendi color. What's and the color? It's like a space gray, kind of like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I like Fendi as a brand, but I'm not. I don't care about brands. I mean, if I'm gonna go after a brand of Fendi that I'll wear, mm. I like Fendi. Coming from a, you know, a, a family that didn't have much, it was always that. You know, I I, I respect my family. I love my family for bringing us here, giving yeah. us what we have here, uh, a roof over our head. But I always promised myself, you know, we're gonna make something of ourselves. Yeah. And, so that uh, was something that really like pine, like kind of set you in the right direction. Absolutely, my father. I love you know he's, he's my inspiration. This man's worked very hard for his entire life to yeah. bring us to Canada, just to bring us here. Yeah. And from here, it's, it's, it's you know I, I looked at it as it's, it's my time, it's our time more now. Yeah. Like kind of take the baton and go to the next level. Yeah, hundred percent. Right? And that was the reason why growing up in high school and university, I kept telling myself I can't end up like that. There's no way I can. I can end up. Yeah, and you saw people going down that journey, and exactly. you're like, no. Nah. My best friends, like, grew up with them, they're yeah. arrested, or they're dropping out, yeah. and stuff. Again, nothing wrong with that stuff. Yeah. But again, I had a bigger vision. I yeah. wanted to do something else with my life, and that's why you know, I went to for school, it. finished school, did all that. Got you. But it was really just the family making sure that at, at the end of the day, they didn't bring us here for no reason. You know, yeah, yeah. Do something. You gotta give it a proper rev. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. Just go for it. You gotta redline this. Really? 100%. There you go. Have you ever had your cars impounded? No, it's not. That's not no. something. <laughs> no, you haven't? Surprisingly enough, no. And, oh and I hope it just never happens. Yeah. Yeah. I'm good with the police and the cops. I respect them. With, with cars like this, you have to be mature and you have to own up to the responsibility. Yeah. Making sure that you're handling them well. What is one thing in your life that if you could change, you would change? Work out more. Work out more? Yeah. Be more active. Yeah. I think uh, I've had, I'm, I'm at a point, I, I used to go to the gym a lot. Mm -hmm. But with work, being busy, yeah. not as active anymore. Got you. And I think that health is everything. Yeah. Like you can only enjoy stuff if you're healthy. What are some tips that you would give to becoming successful in, in, in your version of success? Yeah. I, it's funny, I, I, I get this all the time. What do you do? Tips and all this stuff. Yeah. And I say the same thing over and over again. There is no magic pill to this. Yeah. There is no certain route you can take to get there. Um, if you look, even in, you know people you interview, you'll see everyone in different industries. Yeah. You know, just stick to what you're passionate about, and, and and make sure that you do it right, and stay consistent. The key is being consistent. Yeah. Because if you're not consistent, it, there's no way you're getting the results. It's like going to the gym. Yeah. First day you hit the gym, you're not gonna get 
those abs and, yeah, yeah. and have that beach body. It's impossible. But That's a good reference. It's consistency that yeah. is, that'll get you there. For like, you know, when I was 17 years old to today, I still wake up at the same time, do the same thing. It's been consistent. Got you. Working seven days a week since I was a kid. Mm. You know, so if people think there's a there's a way, a faster way to get to that, no, there is. This drink's pretty good though. Mm -hmm. Right? It's not bad. We're all finished with our ride. Manny, I appreciate you taking me out. Like I said, I've never been in a car like this and it was actually everything I dreamed of and more. Uh, you have a wicked story and you know, just how you work to get where you are and how you drove yourself and how, you know, it all ties into the I told you. I think it's hilarious, <laughs> but it makes a lot of sense. And I think, you know, you got, you're doing something right here. I appreciate it. Thank you for coming out. Yeah. And for all of those that are watching, honestly, keep dreaming, keep pushing. And before you know it, it happens. Right on. It'll come. It'll come. It, <laughs> it always does. Just keep pushing. That's all. Nice. You know? Yeah. Thank you for watching right until the end. I know it wasn't a mansion tour, but honestly, I enjoyed that so much. I hope you'd like watching it. His cars are so cool. Manny's got such an amazing story. If you like this content, make sure you subscribe because I release videos like this every single week. If you don't know who I am, my name's Aaron Van Campen. I go up to mansions, knock on their doors, and ask the question we all want to know. What do you do for a living?